<laughs> if only they measured Taylor Swift albums in gallons of cum, then they're <laughs> how many would come out in this fucking hour? That's <laughs> about a cool hour away for Anthony Eugenio. We're going to have a nice time. Everybody, Wayne Russell, everybody. Welcome to the Open Mic Pain with Anthony and Wayne Podcast. Why, hello, everybody. Yeah, that no. Welcome to an open mic pain with Anthony and Wayne, and this week we are on a special guest edition, and I'm really pumped about this one because this is, no hyperbole, my favorite host in the game, and it's for all kinds of intricate reasons we're going to talk to, Uh, one being that I motherfucking stole some shit from him. (laughs) That's for sure. And I don't want to announce it at every uh, mic that I do that I stole this, so I'm making an announcement right now that our special guest, Cam K. Morton, I steal his shit. How you doing, buddy? Hey, man. How you guys doing? No, that's, yeah, steal away. Steal away. I think it's a and, good And, like always, thing. I have a ball of no light, just shit. <laughs> Wayne Russell. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> doing great. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. For the listeners at home, uh, Cam has an LED light that instead of lighting you with a cell phone, like a really now piece of shit if you do that, because uh, this exists now, it's true. he has a LED ball that he sets green if you're good, uh, yellow if you have a minute left, red if it's over, and life-changing, life-changing stuff. Yeah, so anyway, like, that, for, for those of you, you know. who don't realize, like, if you don't go to open mics, does this seem like a good way to let you know? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I do See, have I it thought, right there. Oh, there she is. Yes. Yeah. I, I thought, um, this is why I, took, I you know uh, Mike Atrobus? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought when I, I took his hosting class and he had the red light that he put on the back wall, I'm like, well, that's pretty genius. And he mm-hmm. goes, if they go over, I just shine it right in their fucking retinas. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm like, that is fucking genius. That's great. And then I went to the point and I was like, whoa, step aside, Mike. So I, I took the red light from Mike. Um, when I did one of his shows, I saw it and I was like, "Oh, that's so much better than a cell phone." And I was like, "But like, I kind of want to get like a fucking traffic light. Like, I want a legitimate traffic light. It's pretty, but, that'd be cool too." But they're like really expensive, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our budget's harder uh, to steal now. It's not big, not big. So, yeah. but maybe so one that was day. something you came up with. Yeah, oh, that's incredible. Yeah, I was wondering where the origin of this virus was because I was like, man, I'm like totally stealing it. And I'm going to pass it on. Like, I'm going to uh, host Mulligans in Biddeford this week Ooh. when this comes out. Uh, fantastic. It's like my uh, one of my favorites in Maine. Actually, in Maine, my favorite for sure. And I'm guest hosting. And I'm going to bring that up there. And that is going to be the equivalent of like when the, like after we murdered all of them and all that stuff, once we settled in. But when we came over the colonials and we showed Native Americans like guns and stuff. <laughs> 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 You great know, period, but. It, it's great. I'm glad that everybody's loving it, and uh, you know, it just adds a little, little, little something special. It does. All right, so let me explain a little bit uh, why I said you're my favorite host because everybody's probably like, "What?" Uh, and but there's good reason. Yeah, why this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I think that in the grand scheme of running uh, Mike, just that the technical aspect of it, I don't think anybody's close to you. Like besides the LED light that we're talking about. You also are very good at understanding when to pump the crowd, when to just move on to the next comic. Like all the things that, because I, I like to look at the the gears behind the comedy machine a lot. For sure. And uh, I can see it working. I see when you do it. You usually have a tag of a joke that is somehow tied into the person before you. And I just I think it's good. It's inspiring. And you know I'm really pumped to have you on for that. Oh man, thank you so much. Uh, take me to dinner next time before you kill me and. <laughs> Uh, I'll add on to that. You're also one of the few hosts I've ever seen tell people to shut the fuck up. That is nice. That is like, nice. You'll see it occasionally. People go like, Shh. no, you're like, go downstairs, motherfucker. Get out of here. You don't want to be part of this. Get out of get out of my club. Well, that's like the thing. It's like we're in such a like. All right, for those of you who don't know, it's at the point, uh, 147 Hanover Street in Boston. So it's downtown Boston. It's right by the North End, and it's like we have this safe space upstairs on the second floor that's like very like comedy clubby it has that vibe like mm-hmm. that old school vibe to it but downstairs is a whole other bar which is open 
And, like, you can totally just go there and, like, drink and talk and watch TV and do whatever the fuck you want. So it's like, if people want to talk, then, yeah, I have no problem just telling them to fuck off and go downstairs. It's kind of like an anti-safe space, which is my favorite part about it, where you yes. can say anything you want, and if you're offended, you're a pussy. And that's the, that's the motto of the point. <laughs> that is the motto of the point, yeah. Uh, I got sick of hearing so many other hosts um, ban people for saying stuff. Um, I've had people not come back just because they're not, not there yet, not funny yet, and I, they're trying the same jokes over and over again, and I'm like, you should probably try to change what you're doing um, before I have you back but um, but once you do let me know and then come on back Um, but Mm -hmm. I don't I don't like to I don't ban anybody Um, I think that's ridiculous a ridiculous idea the the point's fairly new right like I thought you had been doing it a very long time but I I think the last time we chatted you had only been doing it a few months at at that point the first time we talked yeah uh, we started August 22nd of last year. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, so it literally was just a couple... I think my first time there was in uh, October. Yeah, yeah, we had just started. Yep. Um, yeah, so we'll hit a we'll hit a year in August. But, uh, That's crazy awesome. how far it's come, huh? Could you imagine that this amount of people would show up every week to this thing? You know, it's... Uh, I'm glad it's happening, man. You know, especially on a Tuesday. You never really expect it uh, on a day like that. But um, I think it's a really good spot uh, in terms of like foot traffic for getting a real audience in there, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Casey Crawford actually. So I was doing, I was doing uh, showcases when I first started, um, like early 2023, and so I started doing these showcases, and I would do you know four comics of, at 10 minutes and one headliner at 30 minutes, and we were doing it in Winthrop. Uh, first and then at the point and I was charging like 10 bucks a ticket or something like that and we just weren't known you know so we weren't selling tickets and it, it was just not happening for us we had like two people in the audience every time and Casey Crawford was like the point is great you should make it like an open mic make it free but make it like a show and you know get your info on a sandwich board outside because the place has great foot traffic and I took all those ideas and I really put them into work, and uh, and they've been paying off entirely. So, uh, and then you know I come from a film and television background, so uh, I like to add a little a little production value. I feel like a little production value goes a long way. You don't have to go over the top, but mm-hmm. um, if it looks professional, if you're faking it enough. The word cunt by itself is like, uh, it's pretty ugly. You know, you say that and, and people go, Ugh. but you put a nice dress on it and you mm-hmm. throw it out there, you know, cunt for the world to hear. Right. It's beautiful. And that's a, you know, it's a great metaphor for what you're doing, I think. Yeah. You know, when we call it, you know, the Glove Box Comedy Tuesdays instead of, you know, the Glove Box Open, the Glove Box Open Mic, um, which I, I usually announce, you know, this is basically a, an open mic, um, which it is pre booked, but, um, but I think that gives it kind of the illusion of a show, you know, which is That's good. That's what an open mic should be. That's what we've yeah. learned this whole time. Because a lot of the mm-hmm. time you go up to an open mic and the host goes up and he's like, hello, everybody. Thank-. A crowd's there and he's like, every single person that comes up here is going to suck. And all of them are new and you shouldn't expect anything. And then the people go up and they suck because you, know, you kind of set them up that way. But if you create right. the illusion of a show... You can get people who may not kill all the time to get their first experience of that. Like I know, and you probably, uh, I don't know if you've connected the dots on what this means to people yet, but it's kind of cool. It's like the first time I was on a flyer, um, like uh, for that type of show, was yours. So that, that was oh, no really shit. cool. Nice. Yeah, to, so that, it's just cool to see your name on a flyer when you're doing comedy, like that type of effect. Yeah, and you know, I, I always hated the. Um <laughs> the the fucking war that we have at open mics when we go to like sign up for the list mm. and and bucket is just yeah. like I just I just hate bucket <laughs> everybody does yeah yeah bucket can be rough but I do like the pre book thing it also takes away some of the um like like the uh, the panic of am I gonna get there in time mm-hmm. you know the I mean for someone like Anthony and myself we have kids so 
anytime a kid's involved, you're never getting anywhere you want to be when you want to be there. So knowing that you have a secured spot, <laughs> just you just go, hey, uh, my kid fucking sucks. I'm going to be there 15 minutes late. <laughs> right. <laughs> is nice. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it just makes everything overall, I think, a lot easier um, to manage. Uh, I don't like surprises. <laughs> yeah, no, you're booked out pretty far now because it's getting really popular. So there yeah. you go. Go to the you know the point on Tuesdays, everybody, and watch. We'll be there on – well, at least I'll be there. I don't know about Wayne yet. On the 30th. Have you figured that out yet, Wayne? Uh, you might be able to make it, right? So I, I have some work things that came up I'm, I'm trying to finagle through. Um, so I'll, I'll actually I'll hit you up after this and let you know. Um, oh, it's going to be a secret then, everybody. So see that? That's how you build Ooh. anticipation. I'm teasing. <laughs> imagine the Wayne Russell appearance at the point. <laughs> imagine, right, if, like, imagine if like 20 people show up to the point and they're like, Wayne, the, Wayne, where Wayne. Where Wayne. We're like, hey, he's, he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in it. All right, so we want to talk about what got you to the point. So what was the first? Uh, I know you have a background. And uh, film and stuff like that? Is that the origin story for comedy? Were you doing that and you're like, I can do that too? Or what brought you to it? No, I mean, so... I always kind of wanted to do film when I was younger and everything. And I, I that ended up being my whole career. But I I did do theater a lot in high school and college. Um, and I remember we did a talent show in high school when I was like 14. And it was the, that was the first time I ever did stand-up was that. Uh, the talent show when I was 14 and uh, I got a standing ovation uh, and I also got suspended for five days so <laughs> <laughs> let's go hand stuff. in hand oh, so yeah. it went really well <laughs> uh, yeah, basically cool. and uh, I think I, anybody who knows that you know once you get that first laugh you're you're done for um, mm -hmm. you're hooked so it did it, it did um, continue till I was like I don't know 22 23 and uh, and then I just got so busy with my my career at the time, and I just kind of fell out of it for a while. And uh, and I, I I quit drinking about two years ago. And when I quit drinking, my mind was just like going nonstop. And I was like, I gotta like do something with this. So uh, so I decided to get back into comedy. But then you know having having have the the film and television background that I have, and producing and directing and and all that um it made me more interested in what uh what putting on a a live show would be like uh and then i just started looking for places i mean the first place we did was blackstrap barbecue in winthrop and they're fantastic but my buddy owned that place so it was kind of like an inn anyway mm -hmm. um and it wasn't a great setup for comedy necessarily it's more of a you know, it's a barbecue joint. It's like a nice bar for music and everything. Um, but the point, uh, I just remember I blacked out a couple times when I was in my 20s at the point <laughs> on the second floor. And, <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know, I remember that place being pretty good. Uh, and luckily, talking to, you know, their general manager and everything, they were open arms. So it all, uh, it all ended up working out. That's incredible. It is such a great place. Like you said, it's, it does have that comedy club vibe. <clears throat> you walk through the curtains, you walk upstairs, it's nice and dark. For sure. It, it really is incredible. People so, get blackout drunk. It's fantastic. Yep. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I don't know if you, um, I don't know how many of our episodes you've listened to, if any, but we talked about the last time we were at the point. Mm. Um, quick quick uh, reminder story here. We uh, It was Anthony, Justin, George, and myself. Uh, Richard Richie T was there, and there was this uh, yeah. girl. <laughs> there was a girl um, that was like sitting at a table right next to where you stand, mm -hmm. and then two guys, and they just kept talking during everybody's set. And you eventually told them to like quiet down like three or four times, and sent them downstairs. Yeah. So when everything ended, Anthony, Justin, and myself went downstairs, and we were just kind of talking bits and stuff. And I saw one of the guys go in the bathroom. I didn't think anything of it. Then I saw the girl go in the bathroom. I didn't think anything of it. And then. I saw the girl walk out, and then two seconds later, the guy walk out, and I literally pointed to the guy and goes, he just got a fucking blowy, <laughs> and he just slunk out, because the girl went back to what I assumed was her boyfriend. <laughs> she well, walked I, out like this? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the best nights in comedy I've had. Like, I was like a little girl and Anthony. It felt just, really like, good. It felt because grow it, up. You know what yeah. else felt really good was probably that blowy. Yeah, yeah that I'm sure. Really yeah. <laughs> like, sure I mean, like, I feel like I was a part of it. You know, you know, like, I, we made yeah. her so happy upstairs that she was like, <laughs> I'm putting a dick in my mouth. <laughs> like she was just going for it. I'm putting a dick in my mouth and this can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how good we are, by the you way. Know that, you know, that first floor bathroom is very spacious, you know. Um, it is. Now that I'm thinking about it. And it's a one person ba- I'm not trying to tell anybody to give blowjobs in the bathroom at the point. That would be but against my contract. But, uh, but, I will but it's not the I worst have- place. <laughs> <laughs> I like the one next to the kitchen downstairs. Those are, there's two that are just the size of closets. Those are my favorite ones. Those are like the secret ones. Those are the like where you go to take a shit ones. Yeah. It's really <laughs> nice to walk behind a bar and someone not yell at you. You're like, I'm allowed to do this. I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, the two that are the two that are on the second floor. Those are the weird ones. Like. No, yeah, no partition with the yeah. shitter. Yeah, it's just a shitter and next to like two urinals. <laughs> So, like, if you're taking a dump, it's just like, what's up, guys? Yeah, I don't know. So far, knock on wood, no one has dumped in there while we have been trying to do a show. That would be great, though. (laughs) Just an old white guy thing. If you ever see it, it's just going to be an old white man. So, you know, Eddie, you know... Uh, He's there, He's there like, every week at this point. But, uh... So he, he went up on stage, and he was like, I was just in the bathroom... Because somebody had already talked about how weird it was in there, and he was like, "And uh, there's a guy just, just taking a shit, like right there," <laughs> and uh, and then got on stage like two people later, and he was like, "That guy that was taking the shit was me." <laughs> <laughs> like there it is. So there's I the know, guy. Not every comedian takes an unpartitioned shit. But every person who takes an unpartitioned shit is a comedian. Like, I think that that's probably... Because if you have the ability to do that with no remorse or care, you probably talk some shit on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we've all taken a shit on stage, so... Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <Fucking time. clears throat> yeah. I like... So, the point is, I like to schedule to do that right before I have a showcase show. Because it's one of those that you you get a real honest feel, I think, for how your material is going to go 90% of the time there. So mm-hmm. I like that. There's some places that you go that you're like, well, I could have a great, I can do this perfectly, and I'm ambushing five people at a bar that aren't paying attention, and I don't know what the hell's going on. But at least there, that every time I've been there, I've gotten a real honest feedback from a joke. I've never been like, hey, you guys are wrong. It's usually like if I, one goes bad, it's on me. Yeah, it's uh, it, you know that's the blessing of that place is having a real audience and like obviously it's you know we're not selling tickets or anything so it's free but um, and I let people come and go as they please but uh, you know most of the time we're getting at least you know between five and ten people in there uh, to watch a show and you know mm-hmm. on occasion we have a night where the entire place is like standing room only. Um, which can be pretty crazy sometimes because, you know, you're thinking you're going to an open mic and the next thing you know you're performing in front of, like, an audience audience and it's it's nuts. Yep. Um, but that's been, like, the really fun part about that place. I should say we are also doing a show at Premiere on Broadway now, um, mm-hmm. which is not an open mic. It is a showcase, uh, and there are tickets um, uh um, Kenny Sparrow is is kind of heading that one up for me, but uh, but we are in cahoots together, so to speak. <laughs> He's very funny. We love Kenny. Yeah. yeah. So send me that info. I'll, uh, I'll we'll put it in the notes and everything. For sure. <clears throat> we'll yeah. Promote it. I think our next one is uh, actually next week. I think the twenty fifth. Is that a Thursday? Yeah, I think so. Yes, twenty fifth is next week uh, at uh, nice. Premiere on Broadway in Somerville. There's my plug. Check out, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to talk about film. Well, what uh, what is some shit that uh, you, that got you into it? But also, I know you said you always wanted to do it. But what was like the first thing you're like, I'm in film, like I, I'm directing or I'm writing or what got you into it? Uh, my grandfather got a VHS camcorder <laughs> in like 1995, 
So the big uh, brick with the fucking kaleidoscope coming off the like, top? Well, yeah, like the shoulder. Oh, the like shoulder full, ones. Full, full VHS tape fancy. inside of it, you know? Yep. Um, and there used to be these, like... I don't, I don't know, maybe you guys remember them. There used to be these, like, little TV shows about, like, making movies, like, behind-the-scenes things that were on these, like, kid channels and stuff like that. They, they did one where it was, like, behind-the-scenes of Armageddon or something or, or some movie like that. Uh, and so I'd watch all these little things, and then I was like, I could do that, and my grandfather has a camera, you know, and so we would start making these projects together. And then it turned into theater for a while, and... Um, and but I eventually got to a point where I just I really wanted to just do film um, I just like the the romance of it um, and so that's just what I've been doing since like I literally got out of high school when, when you do film are, are you writing the scripts as well or are you just directing or uh, I am much more now in a creative a beneficial creative space uh, with everything mm -hmm. where I am uh, starting to to write, produce, and direct all of my own stuff, but um, right. but for you know fifteen plus years, I w I've been um, primarily working on you know other people's features and television shows and things like that. Are you able to talk about forty four at all? Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. That's also premiering at the point. Oh, is it? Yeah, uh, on April 29th, which is a Monday, at the oh, man. Wide Angle Film Mixer on the second floor. It's free uh, to go to, but I will oh, be yeah. speaking there and showing 44. Yeah, which is my short that I directed last fall with uh, Pasta Bedtime Productions. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that's, uh, that is a horror, right? It is, yeah. Because... Because I don't get jump scared that often. I watch the trailer and I fucking shit my pants. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> I'm I'm glad. You know, I I think I think I kept enough out of those little mini trailers that uh, that it'll still be shocking um, yeah. for people to see. Uh, I'm hoping. Um, but so far, you know, the few people that I have screened it to have been like, "Oh, oh man, you." I jumped, like mm -hmm. so, and that's obviously what we want. Um, if, uh, where, where is that going to be after you premiere it? Do you have uh, you know throw it on YouTube, or do you have a streaming service or something that's that's picked it up? Or? I, well, I think we are we're compiling a list of festivals right now mm -hmm. uh, for it. So, uh, but yeah, as you may or may not know, it it, it costs decent money to. Um, put into the festival, mm -hmm. um, so we're, we need to raise some funds for that. But uh, it'll probably go the festival route for the next year or so, um, and then eventually. I don't know if it's a yearly thing, but uh, I think the Luna Theater in Lowell does um, a film festival. Oh shit! Nice. Um, I'll, I'll hit up uh, Jacques. Did it dealt, dealt with it this past year. I'll hit him up and ask him. I'll send, I'll send yeah, you some it'll benefit you at all. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'd love to. Yeah. You know, especially the the festivals in like the local area because it is a, mm -hmm. a you know it was made in Massachusetts. It's it's a whole local crew and the story is local too. So mm -hmm. um, that that's been the big thing. It speak of my grandfather. Actually, he was the one who taught me the story. Uh, I'm dropping shit everywhere. But uh, I think this is it. Or this is his newer one. This was uh, an old ghost book. Um, uh, the New England Mysteries, Ghost Crimes, Oddities uh, by yeah. Charles Robinson. There was another one somewhere in here. Um, but it's, it was his first one. I think it was called New England Ghost Files. And there was a story called The Red-Headed, the Red -Headed Hitchhiking Ghost of Route 44. Um, and that was a story that my grandfather actually told me when I was just a kid out of that book. And then my producer came to me, and he had written a script about that story. <laughs> and I was like, hell yeah, man. Yeah, I'll totally uh, jump in on that. That's awesome. I can't wait to see that. <clears throat> um, oh, I'm dropping a shit, too. What is it? That's going to be such a crazy thing. Because like, just watching the trailers, it was like, looks very good. Like, I how do you get okay. to the point where you can make something look 
that that good. I'm I'm sure you didn't have Anthony's laughing at me. <laughs> He's just the <laughs> stupidest fucking questions. Always go. you get one an episode where he just like, why do you so good? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, thank you. <laughs> it, it, so it, it was it was meant as a compliment, but also. Fuck it. <laughs> also, the, the ramblings of a answer. fucking crazy man. <laughs> how, how do I make? How do I make look good? Uh, <laughs> uh, I it, I just surround myself with very very talented people. The thing about uh, and I was an assistant director for a very very long time, which I, you know, will always say is the, the main real job on a movie set is of the first assistant director and the and the rest of the assistant directors. Uh, they run the show. They everything that happens happens under them. You know, uh, a piece of equipment doesn't move without them saying it needs to move. So, um, for when you're directing something, I, I do feel like there is a. <laughs> it, it's not. There's, there's a lot of responsibility because the whole creative vision is in your head and it's your brainchild, but um, but everybody else is doing everything. <laughs> If that makes yeah. sense, like if you hire the right people who understand what you're looking for, and you just let them work, that'll create great things. And if you just give subtle notes to things, or if you handle everything in prep and make sure everybody's on the same page, when you go to shooting, honestly, your day should be super easy and should just be like yes or no questions at that point. Uh, and I think we got a really good handle on that when we were shooting this one, especially, but. Um, it's something that we always kind of strive for on every set. Um, Feels like a uh, like it works like a business directorship too, where you're you're kind of like uh, the, the assistant director is going to implement the vision, and the director is going to deal with all the problems that happen because you're trying to implement the vision. <laughs> and that right. you know, ends up being you know a big part of it is just the shit that goes wrong. I imagine. Yeah, which can you know uh, sometimes inspire uh, you know an even better creative moment. Uh, as you're shooting, you know, like uh, restrictions, I think, are important um, when you're making something. Uh, if you just had the freedom to do whatever you wanted, you make the movie would be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you end up, you end up waterworlding it. Yeah, I mean, when I, when we originally started developing it and uh, and prepping it, you know, we had I I say we. They're gonna watch this and be like, you had delusions of grandeur. Because uh, I wanted to shoot on 44, the actual road, which is just kind of a douchebag director thing to want. Um, and it would have it, it was tough to close down that section of road. Um, we we could have worked it out, I think, but we wouldn't have been able to stop semi trucks if they needed to come through. And I was like, we can't, you know, we can't interrupt the flow of things to let trucks through every you know even if it's every hour it doesn't it's still gonna cut into our day and so we we went with a smaller road on the side but but it actually ended up working out better because it felt more like the trees around felt more enclosed the entire space felt creepier um mm. so it's like things like that just it, problems can be good yeah, the original uh, Halloween. I know John Carpenter in the background you can see palm trees, and they're supposed to be in like Connecticut or something like that. And he's like, "Yeah, well, you know, fuck you." Yep, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I'm guessing you're you're somewhat a, a definitely a film buff. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is there is there something is there a film of the past or or more recent or whatever that you're like, damn, I wish I could have worked on that. Like, do you have like a like a Ooh. like a wet dream film? Mm. Uh, well, you know what the thing is. It's like once you start working on movies, um, like the projects I really love that I didn't work on, I almost am glad I didn't because <laughs> I feel like it would ruin it for me. <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, get too I, close to it. I will say there's like there's silly movies for sure that like. Like, I'd love to work on a Fast and Furious movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that would just be fun, you know? Yeah. Like, anytime I get to do an action movie as, like, an assistant director or something, that's always a blast. And <laughs> it, it's, it, like, 
it could be the dumbest thing ever, but like just it makes the days go by so much faster. <laughs> um, but in terms of movies that I like love, uh, you know, I mean, this is gonna sound so fucking cliche, but you know, anything that Stanley Kubrick did was was really my deep in my heart, uh, especially. <laughs> Um, the Shining is my favorite film, um, but Doctor Strange Love is also way up there. Uh, they're so different. <laughs> How do you feel about the you, movie you must watch movie? You must watch movies differently now, too. Like being uh, behind the scenes, so much like, oh, I see how they did that. Or yeah, if you ask like any of my ex girlfriends, they would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> they say movies are tough to watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, play it, guitar, it's... and my wife every time someone has has a guitar in a movie and they're not actually playing it, I'm like, and she's like, just shut the fuck up and enjoy the thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. As a director, yeah. that's a that's a good question. If someone is playing guitar in your film, are you like, hey, don't even fucking play it if you don't know how to play it, or do you let them do the the dead fish hands all over it? Uh, well, if I was directing a scene with somebody who had to play the guitar in the scene, but they didn't know how to play guitar, uh, it would be kept to guitar under the frame close up on their face and then inserts of a real guitar player <laughs> ah, <there we> go. <laughs> and then problem solved <laughs> no no idea. wide shot in this scene good yeah yeah don't make me mad uh, filmmakers out there because it, yeah. it does yeah for sure <laughs> All right, so this is the part where I want to get to um, when we can. I know 44 is one, but are you crowdsourcing another one? You got any other thing that we can plug when it comes to your film work? Uh, not uh, this moment, but I did just. I, the problem is I haven't announced it yet. Um, we did just cast. So I just started a, uh, a production company um, called Plan R Pictures. Um, which you can follow on Instagram. We are at Plan R Pictures. Um, and our first movie is called Motel. Uh, and it's a short. It's going to be about 20 minutes long. Um, but it's about <laughs> this like aging punk rock roadie guy that became a, a private investigator. And he's ordering a dominatrix to his motel room. And when she shows up, it turns out to be uh, his ex-partner from like college. Uh, and and just it goes through the the their evening together. Um, so that's the first one that we are planning on doing. And I did just cast the two leads. Uh, I can't announce them yet, but um, but on our Instagram we'll be announcing uh, you know the leads very soon, and then we'll be doing a seed and spark, uh, which is a, a crowdfunding website uh, strictly for film. So we'll be doing one of those fairly soon. Wow, I'm in the weed industry, and that sounds like it's something we would do. The season spark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do Do you know uh, Do you know Dennis Hurley at all? Um, Dennis Hurley it sounds familiar. So he he's a he's a local actor. Um, we had him on the on the podcast a few months back. Um, he was in uh, like a Justin Timberlake music video. He's been in like all kinds of commercials. He was in Superstore. Super I love that fucking. Um, oh, he's done he's done a bunch of like really cool stuff. Uh, it was a fucking blast talking to him. Every once in a while, I'll hit him up and just just see how he's doing. Um, but he might be a good connection for you. He's a, he, he also just did a. Um, they just started a, a, a sketch show. Of, it's, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember the name of it, but really funny sketches. But he might be a good one to to hook up with for. We do have like three film connected references now that we should get together: Jacques, um, Cam, and Dennis. Like all in the film Four. industry and all stuff. Another one. Ed Driscoll. Oh yeah, Ed Driscoll. Yeah, Ed yeah, Driscoll yeah, yeah. was a writer for. Uh, he was on Drew Carey show, um, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. He was a writer for Dennis Miller. Won an Emmy. I feel like I know. Won an Emmy Driscoll. for Dennis Miller. Yeah. That's yeah, he's coming so up here familiar. to do a one man show soon, right? I think I saw the flyers for that. He's supposed to be. Yeah, he started. He's down in Pennsylvania right now. Uh, he was supposed to let us know when he's coming this way because I'd love to go see that. And I'm in the middle of reading his books right now. That scares the fuck out of me. You imagine writing stand up and you try to like you know, the mythical hour that you want to put together and like of uh, minutes of stand up and then people transcend past that and go, "I want to make a one man show." It's like, "Fuck you! How deep are you going to make me feel bad?" That's such a crazy. You know what I? You, you know what I think of any time that like a comedian goes out and is like, "Oh, it's not a stand up special. It's a one man show." Uh, every single time I hear that, I just think. Oh, well, 
Uh, most of my jokes didn't land, so now it's okay if you don't laugh. <laughs> yeah, now you're just telling stories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as you can be animated, that, I guess that is the key to that. Yeah. I like that. For sure. Sorry, Ed. That's what happened. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> something you've been having a lot of success with is uh, your, your TikTok. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, for you, huh? In, uh, Instagram was the big biggest one. Um, I th- yeah, it's so fucking wild, dude. <laughs> I don't was understand. that one of those things where you just posted a video and then you woke up the next morning and was like, I got a million views? Like, yeah, I mean, I, I will say, you know, so we had the strikes last year. I haven't worked very much in the past year because film just hasn't come back as strong as it, as it was. Um, <laughs> and... I'm looking for all these remote jobs and everything right now so I can still write and do my thing. And a friend of mine uh, said, just start making money on the internet. And I was like, yeah, but like, how? And she's like, you, it's really not that hard to figure out. Just go watch like some videos and see what other popular people are doing and then just do that. And I was like, okay. And so like, I did an experiment because I, I had to clean up I still have to clean out the rest of my grandparents' house because they passed away last year. So I started this little video series where I was going to be cleaning out the place because those videos are huge on the internet. and uh, They really are. Yeah. <clears throat> and the very first video that I posted, uh, I think it's up to almost 4 million views now. Um, and and then I it, within a week, I had hit, well, two weeks, I had hit uh, 100,000 followers from 11,000. Um, it's that sense of, like, mystery, I think. It's like, yeah, it, ha- like, it has nothing to do with me, but every time I see one, I'm like, what the f- fuck? No, it's baked into us. It's fucking baked into us. When I was a kid, we went to the flea market, all you wanted was the grab bag that had a bunch of broken glass and uh, you <laughs> used lollipops in them. But you still wanted it really You still bad. wanted the thing. You wanted to know what was in there. <laughs> Yeah, now they have these, uh, my nieces are all about them, and they're mystery balls or whatever that you get at um, at Walmart. It makes it so easy to buy shit for them, because, they, they, again, it's the same idea. It's that flea market grab bag brought in. But, yeah, yeah same idea when you get to an adult. You just want to know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it seemed to pay off, and then, uh, you know, uh, I tried a couple of different monetization things on my own, and they weren't really hitting anything and then uh i started integrating more comedy and film stuff into the videos uh which is kind of where we're at now but i did get a you know i got management which was nice but we we haven't found any brands yet so but hopefully if you're out there and you want me to make videos for you let me know (laughs) there you go get them get them (laughs) it it blows my mind you see some of these people on on social media just making complete bank it's like i don't understand it it's crazy i yeah i like it, catching predators i like those there's a lot of those out there where they're like let me just catch some predators and those videos those are so, so good all right so so anthony you and me we go over to wayne's house and we get them <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it would be the jump scare of all jump scares if you fucking turn the lights on in his closet <laughs> if you saw from titty down right now you would jump scare cameron Morton, oh, take okay. a seat <laughs> exactly. No, this yeah, guy. I, so I've been. I was watching a bunch of those uh, Colorado Pet Patrol videos today. Those are so good. But oh, then you yeah, see like the, the, that the fat guy with the beard. You know, I don't think you ever see him. He they just uh, they like bait yeah. in freaks, and they say, "Hey, uh, why did you want to try to have sex with this underage kid? I want you to call your wife and tell her that you tried to do that, or I'm going to call the cops." And then they go. Okay, hey honey, I, I try to have sex with a child, and you get to watch this unfold. It's fantastic. I've been watching a lot of uh, <laughs> police body cam footage videos. Oh yeah, um, I fell down a rabbit hole, man. Uh, and and there was one that was my absolute favorite because they're like they're like standing outside this dude's motor home, and they're like, "People are worried about your mom. Is she home?" And he's like, "No." And the door's locked. Well, what are you, how are you going to get in? Oh, I'm waiting for her to get home so she can open it. You realize it smells really bad outside your motorhome, right? And he's like, yeah. You realize we're going to go into your motorhome right now, right? And he was like, okay. And they broke down the door and they went in there. 
His mother was dead in the motorhome. Oh, my God. And then they come out, and the guy's still sitting out there, completely calm. They're like, so she's dead in there. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched this, like, mini... It was, like, a 45-minute little documentary on this guy. This kid, I think he was, like, 20 years old or something. And it started off with his car was... Somehow got uh, into the lake. Into a lake. And they, they had to, like, call the cops and, like, pull it out. And the cops were like, hey, there's it looks like there's, like, blood on the bumper. He's like, I don't know what that is. You know, I do a lot of, like, model painting or something. Maybe it's some paint. Fast forward a couple days. The guy, the kid's mother is, like, cleaning his room and goes into the, the closet and, like, picks up this bag and goes, oh, that smells like shit. Puts it in the sink and she starts opening it up and, like, sees a head. So she calls the cops and, like, hey, uh, I just found a head in my son's closet. And the guy's like, are you sure it was a head? She's like, I fucking know what a head looks like. like what a bitch. Oh, oh you know. know what? On second thought, uh, <laughs> yeah. it was so, a basketball. They, they get the cops there, and the kid shows up. And they're like, hey, we want to talk to you about something that your mom found. He goes, oh, the head? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was so calm about it. Like, uh, that's, that's a whole other world of... Did you see the lady of, in Brazil who her husband fucked. died, and she, like, took his corpse in to sign his papers over in the bank? And he, he weak- like, She yeah. weakened at Bernie them? Yeah, yeah, he's like... <laughs> <laughs> Scrabbing his hand like... <laughs> she was literally doing that. And you could see the tellers like, I don't fucking... Nine to five, bitch. You're like, I don't care. <laughs> Th- thank you, Mr. Enriquez. <laughs> Stamp. <laughs> it was so... Like, you're like, man, the problem with Weekend at Bernie's is you, you get taken out of it by how fake the bodies. Nope, that's exactly what it looks like. It looks <laughs> just like that. That's <laughs> no different. <laughs> oh, man. I, I oh, shit. To... All right. Well, I think we're getting to, uh, close to the end, right, Wayne? You got anything else to, to go before we get going? I don't think so. Uh, Cam, you got anything, uh, anything on your mind that you want to explore? I feel, like, I feel like I've plugged everything. I don't want to be more of a sellout than I already am. And uh, away. and um, <laughs> thank you guys very much for having me. I really appreciate it. This is a lot of fun, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, maybe seeing Wayne on the thirtieth, but definitely seeing Anthony on the thirtieth. I will. AIDS jokes time, everybody. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> all right, this has been an important step for the quest for all of the laughs, or whatever we say. Bye, everybody. <laughs> That guy that was taking the shit was me.